morning, bud. This is Overkill with the Hell Raiders, and today I'm bringing you uh, another tutorial, not necessarily directly to the F-15, but uh, to all the aircraft. And today we're going to talk about access controls, more specifically the access tune. So I have flown with many DCS uh, pilots in my day who should have used dead zones, curvatures, etc., and had no idea what they were and how to use them. So today we're going to hopefully try to clear some of that up if you're one of them and identify if you're somebody who should be using so jump in the aircraft, first thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and get our airborne. I hope you guys are watching because what that is is response of absolutely no curvature or dead zone on the rudder pedals. That's why I'm fighting them so bad. Same thing with the stick. So, as I told you before, um, on the previous tutorial when we did our takeoff, that it was real choppy. Now part of that is it's weird to fly and tell someone what you're doing. But the other token, it has to do with curvature and the sensitivity of all the controls. So if you're someone who's constantly finding yourself doing this, trying to get the aircraft to center line, okay, this kind of tutorial is for you. If you're someone who wants to require more input from the stick to get the input in the aircraft, this tutorial is going to be for you. If you're someone who has a hard time just resting your hand on the stick without the aircraft moving, this tutorial is also going to be for you. Alright, so now that we've gotten our baseline here, you guys have seen how the aircraft perform. It's guilty. It's rapid. These are all very light inputs on the controls. The rudders, I barely touch them. Okay? You see them going back there crazy, and I mean, I'm just, I'm barely doing anything with them. Let's get into how to solve some of this. So, let's get the aircraft leveled out. We're going to go to adjust controls. We're going to axis assign. And first, we're going to start with our rudders. That was the nightmare. So, we're going to axis two. So, as you guys saw, Right in the beginning of the rollout, my aircraft was pulling to the left, jerking to the right, it was all over the place. I had virtually no input on the rudder pedal while I was doing that. It was just my feet resting on it. Okay, I literally would just put pressure with one foot versus the other to fix that. Okay, so the first thing, you see it going jolting crazy like that. Well, that's just has to do with the USB signal. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply a dead zone. We're going to make it about mm, 3 to 4 degrees. Now notice, when we pull it back, the black box is what's indicating the actual motion. Okay, This is sending input to the aircraft right now. So when we put it to about 4, notice the black box is no longer moving. The black box indicates the input that's going to the aircraft. The red dot indicates the input the uh, simulator is receiving from your controller. This could be your throttle, your rudder, your flight stick, doesn't matter. This is the input that we are currently receiving, okay? So the first thing I've done is put dead zone during the range of which this is happening. So now, when we go to taxi again, when we restart here, the aircraft is not going to move until I pass 4% of total throw. So this 100%, this is if I were to jam my rudders all the way over, so there's the red dot, Notice the red dot goes over, but the black box doesn't do anything. Remember, red dot is my rudder pedals that are sitting on the floor in my office. And the black box is the rudder pedal, or rudder axis, in the aircraft. It's not doing anything. Okay, so now we're going to come back down about four or five. So now during this range, I'm actually going to get away with three. Let's get away with three. That looks good. Okay, so at three percent, nothing happens. At four percent is when I'll start getting some input into the aircraft. Now the other thing I didn't like was when I did get input, when I push my pedals in, I get too much. Okay, I, I want more control over how much rudder pedal is being delivered to the aircraft. So what we're going to do 
you, and I'm going to create this curvature. You know what, before I do that, let's go ahead and talk about these from the top down real quick. So, saturation X. Again, notice these are both 100%, so that's going to mean the red dot, the full control of your, of your uh, controller. Again, fly stick, rudder pedal, doesn't matter. So, the X, here's what this is doing. At 50% rudder, so I'm pushing my pedal on about 50% weight. There it is. Look what the black box is doing. The black box is at max. But I can keep pushing the rudder pedal, but notice the black box doesn't move past this point. Because at 50%, about halfway of rudders, the aircraft thinks that you're pushing it full forward to the floor. Okay? So that's what the saturation X does. Gives you more input to the aircraft with less from your controller. Saturation Y does the opposite. Okay, so now at 59%, notice the red dot. Okay. So my rudder pedal is as far forward as it can go. I cannot push it any further. And I'm only getting about 50% performance out of the aircraft. This is the max I can get with my rudder pedal instead of sitting on the floor in my office. The aircraft will not give me any more performance than that. So obviously you don't want that. The only thing I can think where saturation comes into play is if you're using a mouse for the radar sloop. Um, now when I say mouse, I'm talking about a lot of throttles have little mice at your fingertips that can be moved around and programmed. That's where this will come in handy. Or um, possibly with the helicopters, but even then, I'm one of those, I like my full control. So, the one that I prefer is curvature. So now, we're still going to accomplish the same goal. I'm going to increase the curve. Let's go 25 here. Now, here's what this is going to do. I can still jam my pedal to the floor, and I get maximum performance. But now, let's take a look here. So, remember, the red dot is the actual controller. Look where the red dot is compared to the input that I'm getting on the aircraft. Okay? The red dot is much further than the input the aircraft is receiving. So, that's how that works. You have to push more access into your uh, controller to get it, get it into the uh, aircraft. Hope that makes sense, guys. Um, and you'll see what I'm talking about here when we go to tax this next time. So, same thing with the controller. So here's our pitch axis. Now, with the flight stick, I really can't think of a situation where you wouldn't want these two to match, okay? Because you want to be able to gain that muscle memory of, you know, it's the same motion in either direction to get the same kind of performance. Okay, so we're going to access tune. Now, I'm one of those people who rest my hand on the stick, and it tends to move. I tend to maybe a light bump, like something like that, you know. That's just me. And I fidget. I, I got to play with things, okay. So what I'll do is create about a 2% dead zone. Nothing crazy. So there we go. So now, I can comfortably rest my hand on my controller. I can adjust it. I can take my hand off the flight stick and scratch my beard and whatever I need to do. Okay, and nothing's going to happen to the control surface when I put my hand back down. The aircraft's going to stay right where it was. Okay, the other thing I'm going to do is, again, use our curvature. Okay, so I told me to do about 10 to 15. Now, to give you guys an idea, when I first started, this was like a 30. Okay, and I highly recommend that if you are new to the aircraft, if you're new to DCS, if you're new to flight sims, you know, don't be afraid to crank that curvature up because it's going to give you a much more finite control. You're going to be able to learn the aircraft much simpler without fighting it left and right. You're going to get, be able to get a better understanding of how it's performing, how it performs in certain turns and aspects. It's just, it's a much better way to start is by bringing these curvatures up, especially if you're flying in formation with a buddy or uh, learning to land. Landing is a big one. Okay, you do not want the aircraft jolting around, bouncing around, tilting left and right, you know, when you're trying to figure out just how to get it back on the ground. Okay, now, while I'm touching on that, be sure not to go the other direction, okay? Unless you want to. Go in the other direction, we're going to have the opposite effect. Okay, so we're in our pitch, so I'm going to pull back on the stick. Notice that now, I am pulling back less on the stick to get more out of the aircraft. Now, we can see the point where they just about catch up to each other, damn near to the end. Okay, so... I mean, even then, the aircraft reaches its maximum position before the stick does. Okay, remember the black box is the aircraft. So, going negative does the opposite. It will require 
less input on your control to get more into the aircraft. Okay? So we don't want to go that route. We're going to go ahead and bring that back up. And we'll set it to about 15 here. So remember, we want our roll and pitch axis to match. So we're going to do 2. I don't ever touch the saturation when it comes to the flight site. Um, like I said, the only time I've actually ever messed with the saturation is the Y saturation on the uh, when making my TDC slew. And I'll show you guys what that's like when we go through the uh, radar tutorial. All right, so we're going to go ahead and hit OK. We're going to back on plane. We're going to go ahead and slot. We're going to back out. Let's go blue. Back into our aircraft here. Alright, get that throttle back before we have a bad day. Alright, so readjust here. We'll reset our camera values. And we should be ready to roll here. Double check and everything. Okay. Alright, so now we're gonna do this again. Now remember right when I started rolling last time, the aircraft immediately started tilting. Or uh yawing, excuse me, oh, tilting. Now it's going just about straight. So I'm going to make a minor control, but I'm actually having to put input into the bell. Go ahead and start accelerating. We're going to max power here. Okay, now look how much steady it is. I am putting no input into the rudders. Start rotating so we don't blow a tire. Okay. Remember on the takeoff last time, she was all over the place, back and forth, left and right, you know, when I was all over the runway once we got airborne, right? Now, when we level her up, okay, much easier control, we're not all over the place, and we got our flyby, we're still in line with the runway, right where we belong. Alright, so... I hope this sort of sums up what the axis controls do as far as the axis tunes. I know that was sort of uh, a rough one. This is uh, sort of a hard one to, to teach again by a recording. But if you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. I'll be happy to respond. Uh, if I need to clarify anything or if you want me to try a different means of demonstrating that, I'll be more than happy to. Just let me know. Until uh, next time, guys, we'll... Uh, Later. Don't forget to pound that like and hit that subscribe button. We'll talk to you guys soon.